What's going on guys? So here are some products. We're going to talk about products today that in my opinion, every breeder should consider thinking about having is at least know how to use them. Stay tuned. You're not going to miss this episode. All right, guys. Cool. Intro. All right. What's going on, Bowie fam? So, got some stuff here. Um, we were just talking back and forth, and we was like, you know what? Like, let's just talk about products, household products, easy products that you can go buy at your local like grocery store, pharmacy, that you may want to consider having when it comes to being a breeder and just having a multitude of, not even just a breeder, just dogs in general, right? Yeah, some of the things that we can use uh, that we... We do use, especially uh, some of these on a regular basis. Yeah. For example, our last episode was in regards to C-sections. Tums is a good, uh, good um, form of calcium, and it also, <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh, but nowadays we got large breed dog food and we got Sure Grow. But back in the day when we had really big dogs, uh, really big puppies, we would give them a half, a half a pill of Tums a day or every other day wow. for bone growth. Wow. That's old school, though. <laughs> I mean, hey, I, I, I know with the Tums, like, for, for us, like, we just pulled that off my shelf. Like, with the Tums, like, I know after she has the puppies, we typically will give it to her, you know, we'll give it to her for a couple of days or something like that, maybe a week. Um, and that's what we do for our pregnant females that, that just had the puppies, you know. I don't give it before. I usually give it, like, after. Uh, before, you because know? calcium is one of the most important things to ensure... Uh, safe delivery because they, mm. they can calcium crash and get the shakes and yeah walk like they're drunk uh i mean it, for us it does stomach yeah. so then you can lead into antacids for dogs as far as famotidine or omeprazole are the scientific names that the vets would use but we can go to rite aid and just get regular old pepsi ac mm. you know what i mean because sometimes you got a dog with a little bit ulcerated stomach or something you know upset Get famotidine and Pepsi AC. Well, uh, the Pepsi AC is you said um, it is famotidine. Gotcha. And then you have omeprazole, which is and that's know. what you look for in, in like your local pharmacy. Well, like you can get it right at the grocery store. You can get it at Walmart. You can get it at the grocery store. You probably can get it at the dollar sure. store. What one thing I will say to look into is because the only reason why I remember now the only reason why we were reluctant to give it to them before she had the puppies was because i did read something that said if you give too much calcium prior to her having the puppies it can actually affect her own production of calcium towards the puppies or something like that i don't so give a whole lot to. i just look at, i only give them a little bit or yeah, every yeah, other day got Personally, you got, I do okay okay, day, okay. Yeah, yeah. got you got you got uh, you. yes it can uh so the bone growth people think that bone growth is just pure calcium it is yeah. a, it's a breakup of magnesium phosphorus and calcium mm. that helps bone growth that's so, a whole nother episode yeah. so tums is one of them um so other than what we had also just mentioned i mean we can talk about um you can use um what's it called uh the stuff you drink the pink stuff peptobismol yeah or they you can go to the regular old um fuck uh tractor supply and you can get what's it called Famod not famotidine. You can uh calpectate. Oh, you was talking about that. Calpectate uh, is Pepto Bismol, but they use it for cattle. Mm. And you get a really big bottle that will last you the whole life of your breeding <laughs> career. Yeah. Oh, wow. Shit. And it's a lot cheaper too. No, that makes a lot of sense. So you guys can look that up too. Um something else I find myself using this this might be an interesting one for us is like preparation H. You can easily get it at your local CVS, Walmart, grocery store. Um, what we typically use it for is like what I found preparation H to be helpful is like, say, for example, after she's done weaning the pups, we want to tighten up her underside. Yeah, we put in preparation H on. It's helped tighten it up. Um, as well as I did an episode with a, a prolapse, um, used some lube and some prednisone with some preparation H, helped it pop right back in. Um, for dog show people, they use this to take the swelling down in uh, the v vagina area so it doesn't look like the dog's so much in heat. 
Really? Yeah, it's a little yeah. cheap. Uh, another thing you can use it for is if you use straw. Okay. Straw has like little burrows in it and it gets in between your toes. I had a dog one time. It got one in between your toes and they would get these cysts. I'd take it to the dog, to the vet. We would put it on clindamycin. We would pop it. Nothing. Old timer says, oh man, just put some preparation H in between the toes. It sucked that little burrow right out. Wow. 24 hours, it was all gone. Never had a problem again. And just a simple piece of straw that got stuck in between yeah. the, the, the toes. Wow. Yeah. See? So, uh, you use it for anything else or is it generally those are, those are the things? Yeah, that's the only two reasons I really use got it. Got you, got you. So, hey, preparation H. Um, you can use Benadryl. Right here. This yeah, is Benadryl. Benadryl. I've never physically used the, the liquid. I used the pill. Yeah. Um... Uh, you can use it exactly what you would use it for, uh, for an antihistamine. Yeah. You can use it for a slight, uh, you know, uh, to knock them down a little bit, to calm them down. Oh, some. okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've heard of people. I've heard of people using that during, like, especially Fourth of July and stuff yeah, like that. You, you know, I've heard of that. Normally, that's an easy one. Dosage. People always ask me, "What's the dosage?" It's one to one, yeah. one milligram to one pound. And, and yet again, pills are normally 25 milligrams. And it says it in the veterinary drug handbook that anybody could go purchase. It talks it has uh, Benadryl in there. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's good for if they have an allergic reaction, if they snake bite. Not a, yeah. not a venomous snake bite, but if they're having some kind of allergic reaction, you can give that to them. Yeah. Um, you can give it to them to calm them down, stuff like that. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen scenarios where a dog had a treat that caused a little bit of an allergic reaction. And they used a little bit of Benadryl, and it kind of just helped a lot of the swelling go down, you know, mm -hmm. so... I mean, it's um, an antihistamine. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I, I think that you worded it best. I think Benadryl is something that, um, just like why we would use it, is why you would use it for the dog, yeah. you know? It's a good one to have on hand. I like it, especially when you have... I like it so when I'm transporting the dog to like the vet or something, mm. I can give them a little bit of Benadryl so they're a lot calmer sometimes, yeah. they're a lot easier, Yeah, just a little something, something over the counter. Okay. I don't want to sedate the dog because when we get to the vet's office, I don't need the dog. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just want to take that edge off. Got you. Um, so next one we could talk about is, um, hey, we got some canned pumpkin here real quick, right? I love pumpkin, bro. I, this is one of those, I think every breeder should know about this one. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to having canned pumpkin, um, so for me personally, I, I find myself using it mostly when it comes to, you know, younger puppies, you know, um, if they got, whether it's... I a, use it all the time. Yeah. Like I mean, it's in my mush. When I take them off mom... I take pumpkin, one whole can. I use the big can. Oh, you use a whole Walmart. can. Okay, you know, the wow. big one. Yeah. And I get one big thing of uh, yogurt, whole yogurt. I mix them together. Mm. And then I keep it in the refrigerator. And then I take uh, soft food. Okay. And I mix the soft food with that mixture. Yeah. And the reason I like that is I've seen people do uh, l really watery liquid um, puppy milk yeah like really puppy uh, when they're trying to transfer from mom to to hard food yes mush. really they use really liquidy stuff mm. now i've never seen a puppy that could snort any of those three things i just said mixed together yeah. so that i don't get upper respiratory infections mm. so that that thickness makes them use their lap yeah uh, rea uh what's it called reflux to oh. start to lap rather than suck that so when you know when you're first taking a puppy off a of mom, it has that suck reflex still. Yeah, you're teaching it going from suck to a lap. Yep. So that way, I don't have any problems. Even if mm. they tried, it just doesn't go nowhere. It's too thick. And, and and I mean, I've also used it for puppies that are a little bit um loose on the stool. Loose in the stool. Yeah, have a little bit of diarrhea, and it it just helps. I mean, what what. what we were talking about that. It overall helps with digest, uh, yeah, di it's digestion. Yeah, it's pure fiber. Well, the cool thing I like about it, honestly, when you have four-week-old puppies, I don't know too many people that do four-week-old puppies outside. I mean, I put them out pretty young, but yeah. at four weeks old, they're not outside yet. Mm. But the pumpkin helps with the smell of the, the, the feces, too. Really? It doesn't make it so pungent. Like, mm. oh, you know how you walk, get up in the morning, you walk down to the puppies, it's like, oh, God, yeah. that shit yeah. stinks. Yeah. When I use pumpkin, it cuts down on the smell, man. Wow. See? So, and then, I mean, hey. And you can use it for adult dogs for the exact same reason. Yep, exactly. You know, upset stomach, you just give them a little pumpkin. Yeah. I mean, I know of a dog that had, like, uh, I think it was, like, irritable bowel syndrome or something. The vet was like, here, you know, give these things and pumpkin. Yeah. You know? You can even put it in a syringe when you have, like, a little bit of a sucker, uh, a sicker puppy. Put a little bit of milk, 
mix it with the pumpkin and try to just drop it on their tongue a little bit and it firms them up a little bit better. See? So I know people that actually mix it into their bottle fed. But I will mention this. The key thing though is at least when I'm getting pumpkin, it needs to be 100% like no, no, like none of that fake stuff like 50% this or that or whatever. Right. I just get pure pumpkin. Yes, I get straight. It says it right here too. O ingredients, organic pumpkin. Like, well, I don't, I, you, you fancy. I don't get the organic <laughs> I just hey, get regular you know what? pumpkin. It was the Amazon special. But well, I don't get, uh, <laughs> I don't get pumpkin pie feeling. I just get pumpkin. Yep. Or, or it'll say like pumpkin puree, yeah. you know, um, something like that. Um, make sure it's just, just no spices. Yes, with no spices. So pumpkin is another one. Um, we can talk about mineral oil. Yeah. So um, mineral oil, I mean, at least for me, I usually use it mostly when it comes to like puppies that are constipated. That's yeah, usually when I use for it. Yeah. Yeah. Laxative. <laughs> Laxative. So I, I like it for if you suspect a dog who had eaten something and it's not uh, using the bathroom so instead of rushing to the vet now you're allowed to do whatever you want with your dog but like uh it might just have a stomach ache yeah not a blockage so what they do at a vet's office is they put this in their they force this down their throat every two hours for a certain period of time or they'll do a barium study to where they'll flush them with barium and then do x-rays mm. but this is technically what they're doing every two hours to see if they're going to pass something you know, if your dog has a fever, dog's not eating, and the dog's lethargic, and you can catch it on day one, yeah. you don't have to rush to the vet. You can give him this every two hours to see if he has a bowel movement. Mm. He has a bowel movement, everything's normal, and see if he picks up, you know, momentum. You know what I mean? And, and, and like we were saying, I mean, like I said, like for, for, for me, when I have a puppy that's constipated, like, I'll try this, you know what I'm saying? And, and essentially, like... I don't know. There's there's not an exact equation to how much mineral oil that I typically give. I just give a very small amount. Mm -hmm. When it comes to adult dogs, I shove 12 cc's down their throat <laughs> every two hours. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, and, and there's so many things that could cause the puppy to get constipated. I mean, you could have given milk that was too, cold. you know, too cold. Or it, it got too cold. The puppy got too cold. It got too cold. Or even just the uh, mush that you're trying to transition the puppy to. You, puppy to, there wasn't enough liquid. It was too, you know, it, it was too, I guess, uh, binding or whatever you want to call it. I don't know how you would word that. But the, you didn't put enough fluid in it, you know. Yeah, um, know. So uh, normally you don't have that issue with older puppies. You have it more with the younger puppies. Yeah, yeah. I like, you can use it as a, a suppository. A little bit of a suppository up the, up the oh, rectum. Oh, that, and that's what I was going to say, actually. Yeah, so, so with the mineral oil, yeah, you would either give it as like an enema. Or, yeah. I mean, what I do is if the puppy's constipated, I'll give it as an enema and I'll give it a little bit orally as well. Mm -hmm. You know, hit it from, from, from both angles. I mean, some people, you know, they don't understand that when you do C-sections, like we talked about in one of the last episodes, that that macromium or yeah, macromium, whatever yeah. it's called, you guys. The, the really, first poop. Yeah, the very first dark poop. If you don't get it out, it blocks the way and it solidifies and it yeah. gets hard. Yeah. And then you got to use something like this yep. to get it out. Exactly. So, I mean, that's typically what you're going to use mineral oil for. And I mean, hey, if you're a little constipated, you could use it yourself. So, that, I mean, that's what that's it is. Right. Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. that's what it's for. So, I mean, the only advice I could say is I would get like one that doesn't like no flavors, no nothing. Like I just use that one right. There. Yeah, exactly. You it's want like it to be ninety nine at the dollar store. Yep, exactly. You want it, like I, I guess what I look for is like if it's like food grade, like basically if it's if it's safe for you and has no other additives, then it should be all right for the dog. I didn't you know, know they made a different one. Yeah, that's the only one I ever seen. Yeah, I like this. Uh, this is a uh, iodine. I use it on my belly buttons to dry them up and get them knocked off uh, so they don't get septicemia. Mm. Uh, septicemia is when they have an infection of the bloodstream from the open mm. belly button, from laying in their feces, from sometimes mom's not cleaning them. Yeah. It takes a while, but if you can dry that up, same thing with any any wounds. It's good for wounds. It's really yeah. good for wounds. It dries them all up really good. It's a little messy, but it dries everything up pretty good. And I done, I mean, you could pretty much get that uh, anywhere. Yeah, you could pretty much get it anywhere. CVS. You know, and it's it's all the products we're talking about, I mean, are probably under what, ten bucks? Yeah. You know? I mean so, the monostat right there is pretty expensive. Yeah. I, I mean, I would use uh athlete's foot spray before I used it. It's cheaper. Yeah. And it'll do the same thing, it'll get rid of, you know, your ant it's an antifungal. 
You can use antifungals for well, ringworm. Yeah, it, it's not, I mean, it's not so much the mastat seven itself, it's the active ingredients in it, and it's, yeah, like you said, it's anti uh, antifungal. So, like, if you look at it, I think what, what it, what's in the mastat seven is what it's, it's my conazole nitrate. I think that's what it was, that's the antifungal in it. I don't think it has much of any other, any other stuff in it. But. Yeah, the zole tells you yeah. it's an antifungal, really. You know, I mean, uh, ketoconazole. Yeah, the same thing, yeah. Zol. It's all the Zols are your antifungals. So anytime you need it for like ringworm, it's you could spray yeah. monostat. I mean, you can rub monostat on it, but then you're touching it. Yeah. So I prefer like you spray the athlete's foot spray mm. on it. You know so, what I mean? So yeah, I guess I, I guess it depends on the application. Because I know for me, like when I'm using monostat seven. Uh, what I'll use is like a prep pad because I'm usually using it for like say ears like say it's an ear infection You know, obviously uh, We're talking about home remedies if you know, I wasn't if I couldn't get like a Claro or something yeah. um, I would what I used to do oftentimes was take monostat 7 which would be the antifungal uh, For the yeast infections in the ears and then I would really? take hydrocortisone cream and mix the two together So the hydro ear infections yeah, yeah, for like a yeast for for yeast in the ears. I mean, yeah, it makes so, sense. Yeah, yeah, so I would take uh, the monostat seven, and I would take the hydrocortisone. The hydrocortisone cream would help with like a little bit of like the swelling and yeah. the itching. And so then, mm -hmm. I want people to understand: anytime you have a pregnant female, oh yes, yes, do not yes. use ear medication in the ears. So this is the reason why in cattle they use Dex, which is a steroid, mm -hmm. to induce labor. So steroid, anything that has a steroid in it, they try not to, without a shadow of a doubt, try yep. to use it on a pregnant female dog. Yep. But they don't want it to induce labor. Yep. So if you have an ear infection, sounds sad, but the dog has to suffer through it until after yep. birth. Well, let's put it this way. It's like, I mean, if the dog, um, if, if the dog has the, the, the ear infection, uh, no, let me rephrase. If the, uh, from what they're saying with the steroid, I mean, they use steroids for abortions. So they, they in in the book it literally says that they'll use some steroids like for an abortion on a dog so to induce you, labor though that's what it does so so exactly so if you're talking about something that could potentially be used for the abortions or like you said to to actually induce labor or both whatever it's like why would you put that on the ear so you're yeah, yeah I, I, I mean I, you. I recently we had a cat uh, you know my wife breeds them bald cats and man this cat was not going into labor so i called the vet i was like hey is there anything i can induce labor with he's like i don't know try to give it some decks wow she had some pup, she had kittens the next day wow. so See? i guess it worked but that's yeah. what they do for cattle that's what they use they mm. use decks to induce labor so i thought it was pretty cool it was just i just and i just text because i had that dog who was pregnant she had a little bit of an ear infection and uh, just as a precautionary measure i said hey man I'm just making sure, but I can't use, you know, Claro in the ear when they're pregnant. He said, I try not to at all cost because how close is she? I said, if she got like three more days, he'd like wait to after the puppies. Gotcha. And then hit her with it. Just because you don't want to induce labor. It is, gotcha. a, it is a side effect of steroids. Yeah. So just something to be careful of, obviously. Um, but yeah, so uh, you were saying that you use the um, athlete's foot cream for what type ringworm. of things? For ringworm. Yeah. Or if gotcha. you get like... It's like really bad itchy in between the toes. Same thing like with yours. Just spray it down. Wow. See? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so, hey, depending on, I guess, the application you want to use it for, basically you're looking for an antifungal, just like if you were trying to kill an athlete's foot, yeast infection. And you can yeah. use an antibiotic cream for wounds as well, like uh, triple, what is it? Uh, like you're talking about like uh, like an yeah, A and D, like a, yeah, or a neosporin. You yes, can, neosporin. Yeah, you yep, can put yep. it on a sore. You know, like if you have a wound, like a yep. gash or something, you yep. can use neosporin just like yep. you can. Yep. Dog. It is flesh. It, well, actually, yeah. So that relates to similar to like Aquaphor. So Aquaphor is somewhat similar to that. I mean, um, I I absolutely love this stuff, man. So it's it's another. It's similar to like an A and D ointment. You okay. know, it's it's it's. It's a healing ointment, but it's it's very good at hydrating the skin. Um, so I've actually like, for example, like back in the day we would use like A and D ointment for like tattoos and stuff. Yeah. Now we switched over to Aquaphor because we found that it, it was a, it was better at hydrating. You know, so uh, same thing. I basically replaced what I would use the A and D ointment for with my dogs. For now, Aquaphor. So that's nice. you know that's what I use. Um, Peroxide, everybody. I, yeah. I would imagine at this point everybody knows what it does. It induces vomiting. Yep, yep. I mean, you can also clean a wound with it, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, 
Yeah, I had to. Do, I did a video not too long ago. I had a dog who swallowed one of my kids' toys, gave him some hydrogen peroxide, and he vomited right back out. You know, saved me the yeah. trip. And, but but you have to be careful because you know if it's something sharp that they maybe swallowed. Yeah. I don't know if it's all that safe. You know, you may need to you may need to consult your vet because you may not want them to try to vomit it back up and run the risk of them cutting. You know, something. Yeah. So There's you have to be an, careful. There's a, also a, an injection that the vet can give. That does the exact same thing. Mm, so if okay. you think your dog ate something, you have time and you miss that window with this, you can take it to the vet and tell them they ate something and ask for the injection. I know the name of it, but I'll, I'll yeah, let them figure keep it out. PG. You know, <laughs> no, I'll just let them figure it out. There yeah. is an injection that the vet can do that induces th uh, vomiting. Okay, so yeah, so you can... But it also comes wounds too. Yeah. But it, the only thing about it is uh, it does uh, induce scarring. Mm. This induces uh, it kills the, the 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 good cells around the the wound. Kills everything. Well, yeah, I mean it does. It just but it can lead to scarring. Mm. That's why they prefer to use like uh, you know the the creams, not the creams, but the, the hydro hydrogen. Uh, uh, no, uh, it's like a, the blue stuff. Mm. To clean, uh, what, I forget what it's called, chlorhexidine. Oh, chlorhexidine, yeah, yeah. Where they clean everything with that, yep, yep, or they yep. wash it down. That right? works really good. Yeah, that stuff works really good. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's it's pretty damn long lasting in comparison to the other antiseptics. Like I think it actually lasts longer than iodine, as far as its it. its its lifespan, yeah. um, within like you know I guess it's it's disinfecting properties or whatever the case. Gotcha. But um, anyway, so another thing that we can mention is like I'll talk about this real quick, right? This this brown food looking bottle this is just simply distilled water and brown sugar and um i was telling you about this yeah. i mean we use it for essentially i've used it like just there's no exact recipe to how much brown sugar to water i just take a, a whole heaping amount of brown <laughs> sugar and mix it with some water um and essentially it helps with swelling so like say you have a dog that has um dang uh, i forget what it's called when the penis is is stuck prolapse uh, no, 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 not, well, yeah, prolapse, but also remember, like, if, if the sheath, it, like, the penis is, is stuck, oh, yeah. um, oh, oh man, I forgot the name of it, but basically when the penis is stuck and won't go back into the sheath, um, you can spray it, and I've seen it just, like, pop right back in, you know, and sometimes it's also just them getting sprayed with that water makes yeah. them, like, kind of jolt, yeah, <laughs> cold water does it, use. but, um, but yeah, with the brown sugar and water, it really helps with swelling. So, for example, like I've used it on like. I used to like, use sugar as an antiseptic, I believe. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, this is way before me and you. you yeah, know, yeah, they, yeah. They yeah. would pack it with sugar, like a big old wound, they'd pack wow. it with sugar or honey. Hey, yeah. um, well, I heard some good things about using honey. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I use it for. Like, if a dog has a prolapse, whether it's like, uh, you know, penis prolapse or whether it's a vaginal prolapse. Um, it just helps with the swelling. You I've know? never heard so, that in my life. Yeah, like if so, so every day. for example, like um, uh, this one dog. I learned it from another breeder because he was he was collecting his dog, and um, the way the dog uh, his structure was was that if his penis was out for too long, it would scrape the floor. So he would quickly spray the dog with the brown sugar so he could get the penis to pop right back in. Yeah. And sure enough, when we sprayed that dog with the brown sugar, it usually got the swelling went right back down so that he didn't have to worry about the dog. I think that's more of a shock penis. factor. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> but, um... Oh, this is... You can do this one. Right now. Yeah. I don't really use it, but I've seen people use it. For, yeah, uh, I, I gotta say it honestly works. So the green um, isopropyl alcohol, right? The winter green. Um, I can honestly say I've used it and I and I... I truly believe it's helpful and it's worth having um, this with like the lime juice, you know, because so from my understanding, when I started looking into like, why does this actually work? So if you have a dog that's overheating, right, you're going to use the isopropyl alcohol on the paws and the armpits, things like that, because dogs aren't as um, well equipped for sweating like we are as as humans so what this mimics is the evaporation process when you're sweating so you put it on the poles put it on the armpits things like that and as you know the minute you pour this out it starts evaporating so it starts evaporating on the dog making the dog feel cooler like the way we sweat you know so um that's essentially what you're going to do if a dog is overheating 
you know, pour it on the paws, pour it on the armpits, and it'll quickly start evaporating and it'll start helping to cool the dog down um, because it's essentially uh, simulating the sweating process because dogs don't really sweat like us. They kind of, yeah, you know, so it's a little so bit the different. So the one major mistake I've seen people do when dogs are overheating is put them in the, putting the dog in too cold of water. Yeah. You send yeah. them in the shock. Yep. You yep. should just put them in room temperature water because it is still cooler than they are. Yeah. What I know that I've had to do in the past when I had a dog overheat, I have a plastic crate. I fill it with straight tap water mm -hmm. and I just let the dog sit in it. Yeah. Well, I think also. It's almost like sitting in a kiddie pool. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing too is being able to identify is it really the dog overheating or is it because of anxiety? You know, well, either it, way, it's still overheating. Anxiety. Yeah. The anxiety is leading to the, yeah, the overheating. Yeah. And you yeah. got to remove the dog from that. But yeah, I, I like the fact that I can just lock the dog in that cage. Yeah. Let it be. And it's sitting in a nice yeah. cool water. Yeah. Same thing it would, if just think about you sitting in a kiddie pool when you're burning up hot. Yeah. You're just like, oh, this feels so relaxing and good. I think, yeah, I agree that I, I, I think that just as important it is, though, to cool the dog down, it's as important to get the dog in a less exotic, yes, less stressful environment. That's going to be your key thing when the dog is overheating. Less stressful environment and, and like you said, having um, an environment that's helping to cool the dog down, you know, yeah. those are the two biggest things. Um, I'm trying to think, is there any other household products that, um... Robitussin. Oh, Robitussin? What do you use Robitussin for? Uh, cough. Yeah, oh, really? Know. They have things called cough tabs, but you okay. can use Robitussin. Mm -hmm. When you have kennel cough, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. kennel yeah. cough, just for that raw, raspy cough. Gotcha. I've seen, you know, they get, they have a thing called cough tabs, and they're pretty expensive, but you can just get over-the-counter Robitussin. Mmm, interesting. Okay, and it helps okay. with the coughing. Wow, no, I didn't. I never even knew that. I never, yeah. I've never tried that. I mean, um, hey, there you go, guys. I mean, um, I, I'm looking at one thing. I think that we didn't cover. I mean, this I learned this from uh, actually like a vet um, because I had a dog that. So this is castor oil. I had a dog that had dry, has dry eye, and he was just like basically. She's older, and he was like basically, her eyes don't produce tears anymore. He's like. There's nothing I'm really going to be able to do for you other than prescribe her medicine for the rest of her life. Yeah. So he did a little bit of digging and he was like, well, what I found was you can use castor oil. So he said, you just put a few, because... Um, I don't even know what castor oil is. Oh, so here, take, here, take a look. So castor oil is essentially, it's, it's, it's an oil, you know? So because her eyes can't lubricate themselves and produce tears, she'll get like a film over the eyes. Um, and it looks like, um, you ever seen the dog sometimes maybe when they first wake up in the morning and they maybe have a little bit of like mucus on the eye, yeah. it looks like that if you don't give her anything, I mean, it can look like that all day. So with, um, the castor oil, you put a few drops on and it's very thick. So it'll help leave a coating on her eyes to hydrate the eyes and prevent the, the debris and, and the dry eye for, for hours and hours and hours for the, you know, for the day. Sure. Is it damn sure it says avoid eye contact? <laughs> this, no, I know. <laughs> um, I mean, I, never they, they don't, I don't even yeah, know what it is. They don't, they don't make like really one, at least to my knowledge, that's like specifically for the eyes. But he was just like, you can use. Yeah, can use you, I mean, normally it would give you neo, ne, neopolydex. Yeah, but I mean, for life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd get, so, it'd get expensive. Yeah. So um, he was like, here's a natural remedy that you can use at home. And you know, you give her the castor oil. So that's what we did. Never, and, and I don't even, I don't even know what castor oil even even does. It doesn't tell you what it does. Yeah. So what does it, it do it, for humans? It, what do you use so, it for So, so what's funny is like for castor oil, like it does a few things. Like for example, on your on your skin, like say say you put it on. Like I know some people use it for their dog, like dog nose creams. They'll use it for even in like uh, in a um, a lotion, you know, for your for your body. Um, cause the thing with castor oil is because it's such a thick oil, it lasts for so long. So sure. it'll keep whatever, like if you put on your hands, your hands will be, um, hydrated for like hours. You ain't going to have no ashy hands. You know what I'm saying? For hours and hours and hours, like damn near the whole day. Gotcha. So, um, that's really what it is. It's an oil that helps hydrate. That's, um, it's just a very last long lasting, you know, it lasts a lot longer than like the regular eye drops because that's what he initially gave us and those eye drops i mean you gotta give it to the dog like it was like damn near every hour 
Where this would last hours and hours and hours, you know? Gotcha. So, um, yeah, castor oil. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other household products that I would recommend, you know... Dawn Dish Detergent. I live and die by that shit, bro. What do you, what do you use it for? Uh, fleas. Mmm, yeah. I love it, bro. I wash every dog that leaves my house and Dawn. Do you understand? Right, let me rephrase like, that my work is. Like, can you explain the reasoning why, it, like, yeah, how it kills fix the, the, uh, the outer shell of the flea. And then it makes it suffocate and die. Mm. So it literally is the best flea medicine I've ever used. And it's 99 cents at the dollar store. Mm. But it only kills the adults. doesn't kill the babies. So gotcha. normally if you have to, you got to give it like maybe one day and then two or three days later you do it again. Mm. Just to kill the babies. But yeah, gotcha. I, I mean, I've bought dogs and they've been infested with fleas. Give wow. them a bath and it literally looks like dirt just falling off of them. Yeah, I'd live yeah. and die by it. And, and you know what? That leads me to another thing. Um, I've had some dogs that actually had... So speaking of, of like soaps, for example, um, a shampoo that I always kind of keep on standby is like some Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo. Mm -hmm. Because I've had some dogs who have super sensitive skin sometimes. And that that was one of the shampoos that actually really worked. Like, like it, yeah, it's a baby shampoo. It's for babies, yeah. you know? So super sensitive skin. So I always keep a little bit of that on standby you know, for the those that have super sensitive skin problems, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that's pretty much it, right? I mean, yeah, I mean household. These are household items. Yes. I mean, you can, we can go on and on, like yeah, shoving yeah. dust and shit like yeah. that. But these are household items that would be found in the actual home. Exactly. Literally, I mean, what we're looking at in this at this table right in front of us, I mean, you could probably pick all this stuff up for... Uh, mom's stats is his, not mine. <laughs> you could probably pick up all this stuff for like, uh, maybe like under 50 bucks, yeah, something like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. you know? So, um... Hey, as always, guys, hope this information is helpful, hope it's useful. See you guys on the next episode. All right.